Spoiler alert, because I'm going to throw that out there now, because that's the other thing everybody always complains about. Watch the movie before you watch my thing. I'm going to say that from now on. In fact, I'm going to put that at the beginning of everything. I'm going to say, watch the movie before you watch this like little clip thing, because all I'm doing is talking about how great this movie is. And finally tonight, the Darth Hexans decided he wanted to see Demons on this show. And Demons will never be one that is far from a DVD player because I love that movie. I love the heady days of 80s Italian movies and I miss them so much. The days of Burial Ground and Demons and everything that Dario was putting out and the whole bit. It was just like, every time there's an 80s horror movie, you're like, awesome. This is gonna be great. It's gonna make no sense whatsoever. There's gonna be a ton of gore and you're just gonna watch it and you're gonna sit there like, man, that movie was really cool. And Demons fits that bill perfectly. Now, well, first off, if some dude is like, oh, this, I, this is what happens in the movie. I'm not just making this part up. So if you're like wandering around the subway and some dude in like a half metal mask is trying to give you free movie tickets, do not take them because nothing good can ever come from that whatsoever. If he's stalking you around and he's scaring you, do not go to his film premiere because it's probably either going to be a snuff movie or it's going to be like an X-rated movie. And about halfway through when you're sitting there with your pants down, all of a sudden your mom pops up and then you lose it completely. Oh wait, I went too far with that one, didn't I? I don't need to get into my personal life whatsoever. But anyway, Demons is basically these all like this whole group of people show up at this movie theater and they're all hanging out and it's this super diverse cast, right? You got like kind of the the twenty somethings and the guy's got these really terrible sweaters that he's got like tied around his neck and, and all this. And you got the husband and the wife, it's their anniversary, and the husband's a complete douche, so I don't know his wife's still with him. And then you have the woman who shows up with her blind husband to the movies. Because and then she has to sit there and explain the whole thing to him. Do not sit behind me, please, because then I'm going to be annoyed that you're talking through the whole thing. I appreciate the fact that you're blind, but like go sit somewhere else over there where there's nobody sitting. And that's the thing. There's like ten people in this theater too, so I like to afford to run this like sneak preview. Every sneak preview I've ever been to, this is what happens. There's always a trillion people there, and it's like they've never been to a movie. Like they don't know how to act in the theater, and they're like texting and talking and yelling and the whole bit. And it's like, dudes, you got him free. Shut the hell up. Just watch the damn movie. That's what we're here for but that's beside the point so anyway and then you got the best Tony the pimp right he's like this great pimp stereotype character shaved head big sideburns he's got his two women sitting beside him they're like smoking dope in the theater and the whole bit and one of them decides oh, I'm gonna pick up this demon mask that's sitting on this motorcycle with a guy with like a giant lance with a demon mask on the end why this is sitting in the middle of the lobby of this movie theater I don't know except for the fact that later on the dude jumps on the motorcycle and starts like chopping the heads off of demons and shit which is awesome but she puts a mask on cuts herself turns into a demon because that's what happens when you put a demon mask on that has a little spike in it it cuts you and just like in the movie now this movie's terrible that they're watching so I don't even know why all these people would be watching like sitting there we would watch it like the people watching the show right now we would actually sit there and watch this movie but I'm sorry, husband and his wife on his anniversary, they're not going to sit through like this movie where these kids are like getting in Nostradamus' tomb and then one of them gets cut just like this girl and then she turns into crazy demon and like her teeth are coming out and knocking her other teeth out and it's real gross and then they all go crazy and it doesn't even really make a whole lot of sense because I haven't quite figured out exactly how you even turn into a demon because sometimes you get bit or scratched and you turn into a demon but then there's one part where the woman pokes out the blind guy's eyes which seems kind of cruel now that I think about it. It's like the guy can't see anyway. You don't need to give him any more pain by poking out his eyes. It's not going to do any good. Freaking poke out his ears and then he can't hear or see and then it's funny. So anyway, so she pokes out his eyes, right? And he's like, but he doesn't turn into a demon. Come on! What's the matter with you? Holy shit! She's a friend of mine! Hey, baby. What happened? Shit, baby, what happened? There's some kind of mad man loose in here. What the hell is going on here, huh? Cheryl, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I should have never suggested we come here. The movie is happening just like in the movie. <laughs> Son of a bitch, shit. Hey, George, look at her fingernails. <laughs>
true. We gotta get out of here. Get out! Everybody get away! Get out! What are you waiting for? Run! <laughs>
You know, I didn't think we were going to make it. It's the movie. What about the movie? I don't know how to explain it. It's just a feeling. The movie's to blame for all this. She's right. She put on that mask and scratched herself. Get it? Because of that scratch, she became a demon. An instrument of evil. Like they said in the damn movie, you heard them. Right? Yes. We gotta stop it. <laughs> Believe me, we gotta stop the movie. He's right, yes. It's the movie. Stop the movie. Hey, George, you believe that shit? What are you waiting for? Stop the movie. <laughs> Where's the projection booth? Upstairs, next to the gallery. Right, we'll all go up there together. If we stick together, no one gets hurt. Got it? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Hannah! Hannah! I lost my girl! Get out of the way! Hannah! Where are you? There he is, behind the wall. Careful, he has a knife. Oh. He get you? Ah. Get back! God! That's horrible. So everybody's turning into demons, you know, and they're all chasing each other around. And then it's like, oh, we don't have enough people in this theater, which, you know, they really didn't, because like I said, there's only like 10 people in this theater. So let's have these punk rockers that just happen to be driving around snorting coke out of a coke can, like show up, right? You know, and you know they're bad because on the soundtrack, the whole soundtrack of this movie is kind of like metal songs or like hard rock songs. Like there's some really old Motley Crue stuff and there's some Accept and there's some Saxon, you know, and they got like the guitars blazing and the whole bit. And the punk rockers, they're driving around. What are they listening to? Go West When We Close Our Eyes. Because you know, nothing says punk rock, snorting coke, getting ready to kick some ass, like Go West. And if you don't know that song, listen to it. And then you're like, why the hell were those punk rockers driving around? Because you cannot take that seriously. So they somehow get in the movie theater, even though it's all like bricked up, and they get in there. And then they turn into demons, because that's what's going to happen. And then you know, you got the one heroine and the hero, and they're driving around on the motorcycle. I was talking about before, chopping off people's heads with swords and stuff like that. And then, spoiler alert, giant helicopter falls through the roof. I still have not figured that out whatsoever what this damn helicopter just all of a sudden there's a helicopter in there just like right in the middle of the movie theater and then they start it up and there's like shit flying all over them and stuff and then you get the crazy twist ending that happens as the credits are rolling so stick around and watch the credits it's not like Avengers where you like sit there and you're like man there's gonna be like a whole bunch of credits it like happens like right away so you only have to watch about two minutes of the credits so it's okay but then you get like some crazy like really bad hard rock song that's playing over the end anyway but all it is is insane demons action there's tons of great gore you got if you read fangoria when you were a kid or like even like bought back issues when you weren't a kid you remember the scene where the woman's like bent down and like demons climbing climbing through her back and i mean the gore is great Dario Argento worked on this movie. Lombardo Bava, who's the guy who's Mario Bava's kid, directed it back when he was still making good movies. It was friggin' awesome. And if you've seen this, you remember it. If you haven't, go buy it now. And it even comes on a two-pack with Demons and Demons 2, which isn't good, but has more demon stuff. And Tony the Pimp shows back up, except this time he's like a personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs>